put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Primal Fear Moon Review Set in Chicago Edward Norton plays Aaron, a young choir boy, on trial. Since he is underage, trying him as an adult could be a challenge, but that's a minor problem. He is charged with the brutal murder of a bishop. Whether or not he was the one who did it, the, the perpetrator did leave both the knight and queen completely unharmed. Experts say that it wasn't sexual, so he is not getting off on this one. Defense attorney Martin Vale, played by Richard Gere, is one of the best defense attorneys. He is ready with and master of the Chewbacca defense. He is the used car salesman Aaron needs right now, but is he also the one he deserves? Obviously, Aaron knows right from wrong. There's no sense preaching to the choir boy. And lawyers are, of course, one of these things that you think you hate until you need one, and then you're grateful that they exist. Gear very much uses his charm, but he is also slimy, and he does make you care about this type of person that you don't usually similar to liar liar. The basically he's he loves the spotlight, and he gets these high-profile clients off on technicality. technicalities, plural. This has a lot of really great TV actors and one of the reviewers suggests it's because director Gurley Hoblet came from TV. Laura Linney plays the the prosecution attorney Janet Venable and Basically, she and Martin have a history, and he refers to it as a relationship. She says it was a one-night stand that lasted six months. So there's, of course, something very personal there, and he, he quit his job at the firm they both worked. She's still working there, so he's still telling her you, you should quit you you know and he also you know his former boss is also part of this kind of you know they they have issues with each other although i will say that that is maybe one of the subplots that didn't need at least not as much time as it got and over the course of the trial, we get a lot of details, we get analyses and expert statement, statements. There are a few, you know, it's, it's not an action movie, but there is some, you know, maybe someone will have to chase down a person of interest, or maybe there'll be a short struggle or something. And unfortunately, the the blocking is really not very good there. It's it's difficult to tell exactly who is where and what just happened and yeah. Now over the course of the movie there's this journalist who's writing a cover story about Martin, who knows cover stories, and they use this is a very clever device to let him say a lot of things that he thinks about his principles and such, which, you know, if he just said it to characters who know, that wouldn't work, that would be awkward, but here we have this reporter who 
you know, so he's legitimately saying exactly how he approaches things. Or, you know, he, he might not always be telling the truth, but it's how he presents himself, certainly. And this really uses the R rating. The, you know, there is sex, violence, language. And this has a lot of really strong characters verbally fighting one another, faith, facing off against one another. And it uses smoking as this kind of, it's, it's a sign of maybe, maybe some lost innocence. There is, it's, it's a way to cope with ha the harshness of the real world. And through these face-offs, the various characters also actually stand out. There are a lot of characters in this. Although it does focus primarily on just a few, the, the supporting players do get, yeah, you, you get a real sense of who they are. Now, this was Edward Norton's feature debut, debut. his first movie. And you can really see both why he was cast and, I mean, you know, today it's, it's not exactly a big surprise that Edward Norton is an amazing actor. But you can really see why, you know, based on the performance he gives here, why they cast him and why it was so positively received. You know, even people who don't necessarily like this movie all that much, still say N Norton does a really good job, though. There were 2,100 actors who auditioned for the role of Aaron Stampler, including Matt Damon. Edward Furlong was considered, they weren't sure how much mileage that their Ed needed to have. DiCaprio was in so, and and James Marsden and James Vanderbeek were both considered. If I hadn't watched the the Rules of Attraction, I don't think I would have been able to see Vanderbeek in in a role like this. But I could definitely see it now. Now, one review, at least one review, noted that the movie relies on an overload of tangential subplots to look busy and yeah there are definitely things that really didn't need to be there and yeah I, I do think that I think it would have helped if some of them had just been written out it would be difficult to cut them out but if they had been written out of the script and then the movie would have been it's it's not an Excuse me. It's not an overlong movie, but if you if you took out some of those subplots, gave it a little bit more of a tighter focus, sharper focus, brought down the running time a little bit, I, th I think it would be a stronger movie. And Roger Ebert said that the the story is as good as they get for this kind of you know movie. But it is, it rises above because of the three-dimensional characters. And said that Richard Gere gives one of his best performances of his career, which I would agree with. And that Laura Linney rises above what would have been a stock character, which is also very much true. You know, this is basically, you know, she's the, she's the one that the, that gear is supposed to defeat, you know, and there's this, you know, I already mentioned their their relationship. This could very easily have been been this kind of scorned lover kind of thing, and it really isn't. You really get where she's coming from as well. And uh, Ebert also noted that Norton is completely convincing. Now, the some say that Norton is underused in this, and I, I do think that it might have, you, you, yeah, you could have given him more. And the incredibly talented 
Cherio Quinn is definitely underused. And the, the, the movie is based on a book. I want to say the author is called William Deal, if that's how you pronounce it. And both Aaron and Martin are actually in two other books by the author. I like most of what I've seen of Gregory Hoblet's work. And I will admit, I've only seen his features. I have not watched any of his TV work. I haven't avoided it. I just haven't really... I haven't had to, to find it. And this was his featured debut. And he does quite well. And... As I said in my Liar Liar review, I love courtroom films, so yeah, this one really right up my alley. And some critics have said that the you know the film isn't entirely credible. I I think there are elements of it that could have been more and and that reviewer specifically also says it's more it's kind of sensationalist and yeah it, it is very much a Hollywood movie and other readers have noted that the the message you know it, it gets a little heavy preaching is a little it's almost too obvious a thing to say about yeah a movie which literally is about did this choir boy kill this archbishop and as I've noted it's it's a slow but engaging thriller and that it doesn't do anything particularly interesting or unique with the material the movie is two hours and two minutes not counting the end credits and two, two hours and five minutes if you do count them and on Rotten Tomatoes it has a 74 which is 32 fresh to 11 rotten please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content